following is a production of Dirty Mo Media. Welcome to DJ Team Reloaded. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody get caught cheating and not win as often as Stuart Haas? Listen, it's no doubt difficult to win a cup race. I'm going to regret this. I do see <laughs> Brett's point. So you mentioned the crash on the back stretch. Did you start it? <laughs> Welcome to the Bojangles studio. Andrew Curlin here, supervising uh, producer of the Dale Jr. Download. I'm all alone this week. Everyone left. They're traveling. They're seeing the world. Um, But we've got Carla on Zoom. Carla, where are you? Why'd you leave me? I know. I feel like I need to apologize that we (laughs) left you all alone. It's going to be okay, though. We're going to be back in studio next week. But yeah, right now I'm in Indianapolis For the NFL Combine here with Fox Charlotte, of course, we cover the Panthers, some of the local guys in Charlotte, but it's so weird, right? Like I get so focused on NASCAR one week, and then now I'm so focused on the NFL. So I apologize in advance if I start talking about, you know, uh, coaches and players instead of drivers and crew chiefs. Like my brain is just kind of firing on all cylinders right now. Listen, it's a weird day. It's leap day. It's February 29th. I'm I'm the only one here. You know, it's just one of those days, I think, right? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Uh, But the NFL Combine is kind of crazy, right? It's called like the NFL Spring Break. Um, Ah. So it's, yeah, it's even more than just about these guys kind of running their times and and all of that. But we've we've got to talk about all the cheating that's happened in NASCAR lately. I mean, this is the topic of conversation this week, right? Absolutely, it is. And I want to ask you, like, you cover all these different sports, right? And we've got some cheating news that, uh, again, this is the, the great part about this Thursday show is we're going to hit the news topics that have since broken uh, from the Tuesday show and a lot of penalties that came out this week. I want to know, you've covered a lot of sports. Is this sport the hardest one to keep track of? I don't know if it's the hardest one to keep track of. Like if you're not familiar with the sport, then yeah. then maybe still that way. If you're immersed into it, though, like you're you kind of know the schedule, right? You know when the penalties are coming down and when that late news is going to break during the week. Um, But as far as cheating is concerned, I feel like it's the only sport where we like applaud when cheating happens, right? Or we like fascinated by the decisions that went into it. I think, you know, back to the college football season, you had Michigan sign stealing and everybody was like, oh man, that's terrible of Michigan. Uh, John Harbaugh, all of that. You think about deflate gate, you think about the Astros (laughs) banging on the trash cans and, and all of those things. And you're like, man, I can't stand that team because they're such cheaters. But in NASCAR, we're like, that's awesome. I wish they could do more of it. It's such a, yeah, kind of a conundrum there. Does this make me, maybe this is the NASCAR fan in me, but you mentioned some <laughs> of those, you know, cheating stories in other sports and scandals that happen. I look at that. I'm like, good for them. Smart. You know, <laughs> is that wrong for me to think that? <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess when they get, you know, championships and yeah. all that taken away from them, maybe it seems like the arbitrary line has been crossed a little bit. Like, I honestly, like when that th- stuff with the Astros happen, I'm, in a, Bra- I'm a Braves fan. Mm. Um, I'm like, they will forever be the cheaters for me. <laughs> I don't know if I will ever get over the fact that they went to like those links for a baseball game. But again, I I'm fascinated by by NASCAR and just the creativity that these guys kind of go through. And I think it's it's more so because like we don't understand it. Right. Like I can understand mm-hmm. the the trash can banging and maybe deflating the ball so you get a bigger advantage. But these cars, I mean, like the minds behind that is just so, so different. And, and I just um yeah, love talking about it. And I think other like race fans love this too. It kind of blew up all week talking about, you know, Joey's gloves, you talking about SHR, all yes. of those things, the penalties. Fans love talking about this. Well, we asked the fans what their favorite cheating story is. I'm just going to tease it. All right. So as you watch this, I want you to think of what your favorite NASCAR cheating, or I guess we'll use the word innovation, right? We'll be nice about it. Uh, story that it is. And we're going to share that at the end of the show. We use that hashtag. Don't hold me to it. But you mentioned the Stuart Haas racing. I want to start there. Uh, this week, it was announced two L1 level penalties for improper roof and air deflectors for the number 10 and number 41 car. This was a big topic, especially on DBC. They talked about it this week. Let's hear what they had to say. Does anybody get caught cheating and not win as often as Stuart Haas? Like, the sons of have been caught 
like I, a couple times a year. It seems like since we went to this new <clears throat> yeah. car. Well, and, and I what was it? Roof rails this week. They like two cars I, got caught. Yeah, like it. I get like Hendrick got hammered last year or two years ago for them louvers, but they were hauling ass when they did it. Like <laughs> this is the third or fourth time Stuart Haas has got a penalty. And they haven't been that good in two years. Oh, poor Stuart Haas <laughs> Racing. They're trying, right? You got to at least admire the efforts. Yeah, I, you definitely do. It's almost funnier the second time that I heard Freddie say that. I listened to DBC earlier this week and literally laughed out loud when he said that. Because, yeah, you're talking about cheating, getting the advantage. Like, let's at least win some races. Let's be up front. Let's be a contender in these races. Now they've got Doc 35 points, and you're like, wow, they might not ever see just the middle of the field as far as the point standings go. You've got all four drivers. I think the highest ranking one is maybe like 22nd, yeah. and they're all below that. So you're like, you kind of feel bad for them, but you're like, guys, we got to we gotta reassess, like, you know, risk versus reward when it comes to the cheating. Like, how are, are we really making a big enough difference here? <laughs> it's all the risk and none of the reward right now. TJ goes, yeah, well, um, what, what? what? TJ, expand on that. I want to know what TJ, maybe we got to ask him next week. Hey, what did you actually think of this? Um, but so you, you talked to all the drivers preseason, right? Stuart Haas racing. They didn't, they didn't have a great season last year. We're losing Kevin Harvick. Now these penalties are, are laid on them. Like what's this? What were the spirits among these Stuart Haas racing drivers? Yeah, I talked to all four of these guys within the day, and it was kind of interesting to hear kind of them re repeat, not repeat, but like, you know, they had the same the story lines. like we've all yeah. talked in the off season. Um, and then certainly after I talked to them, hearing, you know, Tony Stewart's comments about, hey, we need to win races or we're going to start making changes. I think there's definitely that pressure there. They had this big rebrand, right? You want to set like kind of a different identity for this team, but you've also got to have the results to really back that up. And, and that's what we haven't seen yet. So I think spirits are high. They always are, I think, for teams at the beginning of the season when you haven't even really raced many races. Uh, so that makes sense. But I think there's definitely pressure there. And these are all really young guys, right? Stuart Haas yeah. has had some of the the veterans in the sport and now that's not the case and, and you just kind of wonder what the emotional tie is to some of these drivers ryan priest i think feels you know he has a good relationship with tony stewart tony stewart has always been high on priest but even he feels like i've got to win like i've got to win this year i mean mm -hmm. that's it's like win and end like you have you have to do that to prove that you belong with this team but again you just wonder what are the resources like for shr right now do they have enough to help these guys get into victory lane. I mean, it's early in the season, right? We can't make any speculations about that. They could certainly do that um, as we get further into the season. But it's definitely questions that that you have when you look at that team. I I don't know about you, but I would be I, I would be fascinated to sit in on one of these competition meetings as they're <laughs> discussing the ideas. Like, hey, what if we did this and that? And that leads actually to the big cheating story of the week Joey Logano <laughs> and the gloves the webbed gloves everyone's been talking about it uh and Denny Hamlin this week on Actions Detrimental explained exactly what type of advantage Joey Logano was getting let's like listen because this is likely considered an aerodynamic device so you know what's the difference in that and me putting something in my pocket and grabbing it and then holding it out there you know what I mean to to deflect air again i think with the Stuart haas racing uh penalties that came out carla i admire the efforts and we were talking about it on the download with this next gen car the box to to yeah. work in is so much smaller so it's like people are looking at different places to see if they could find an advantage what was your reaction when you saw the gloves I mean, I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought he was about to go take the cookies out of the oven after he got out of the car, right? I mean, it just seemed like maybe they should have just had an oven mitt with him driving. Yeah. Uh, it was as it was that awkward, right, to see that from the end camera car. You're like, <laughs> what is this? Like, I so confusing. Um, but then to think, wow, that's I mean, they're looking at every you know, every angle to try and get an advantage. And, you you know, you've always seen drivers kind of lift their hand to to block the air in the car. But this was definitely creative. Um, and, and honestly, I don't think I even realized that there was a regulation on gloves. So, you know, I think we're all aware of that now. Um, but you just wonder, you wonder where the starting point for that conversation 
was, right? Hey, let's add some, you know, some extra material to, right. to the I want to know who who actually started that. That's that's the conversation that I want to have. <laughs> we uh we had a tweet go out. Dale tweeted this on Sunday morning and he's like wrong answers only. What was Joey Logano using the gloves for? And we read some of the best ones on the download. Someone said Joey Logano actually just has web fingers. So it was just fitting his hand. <laughs> that was my favorite one, I think. <laughs> Yeah, man. Wow. And I think I saw you were like, sw- are you a swimmer? Did yeah. I see this? Yeah. Okay. You could put those on your hands and get even a, a bigger advantage with, yeah, the flippers. So. Right. Yeah. So there's like uh, these hand paddles that you can wear while swimming. And Dale's like, you're cheating using that. I'm like, this is during practice, man. I'm not competing and using these. So that's, I think, where we disagreed. Also, you, you mentioned the oven mitts. I think if he actually used oven mitts, would that be SFI approved? Potentially, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, but another material, like more material for them to use. I don't. Yeah. I mean, and again, that kind of goes back to the conversation. He could have pulled anything out of his pocket or exactly. up in the car and pulled it up. Like, what would they have done then? It, does it have to be something that a driver wears or that's already mm-hmm. regulated? Um, you certainly got to think that NASCAR is going to take that into consideration in the future. Now, listen. This is such a fascinating topic. It's one of my favorite topics to talk about in the sport. And so we got to bring this guy in. I've been so excited to have this chance to pick his brain. Executive director of the Cars Tour, Kip Childress, former NASCAR official for so many years, is here to talk all about it. Let's bring Kip in. What's up, man? How are you? Doing good. Welcome to the show. Wow, this is this is awesome. This is I've only been in the studio one other time uh, with uh, the door bumper clear guys a number of years ago. Yep. I'm in the building almost every day, but <laughs> but to not be in here. So I, I love coming in here. Just if nothing else, just taking a look around at the history. Yeah. Come on in, steal something from the cooler. Ooh. You know, that's why it's stashed right there. It's easy access right from the door. But uh, Kip, welcome in. We're so excited to talk to you about all of this. Uh, the Joey Logano gloves. We were just talking about that. The web gloves. That's the newest kind of innovation that we've seen out of the Cup Series this year. <laughs> right. What was your initial reaction when you saw that? Um, so, yeah, not surprised, right? I mean, these guys, uh, drivers, crew chiefs, uh, engineers, they're, they're all thinking, like you, you guys have been talking about, they're, they're trying to find that little extra, mm-hmm. right, to, to try to see what they can do to, to just get that tenth of a second or, or even less than that in some cases. So, uh, you know, it's, um, again, not surprised, but at the same time too, really not surprised that NASCAR was on top of that and, and, uh, took swift action on it. Is it hard to catch these guys? I mean, like, what are you looking for? And I mean, I guess with the Joey and the glove situation, these in-car cameras help in that case. Right. But like how difficult is it to to catch these guys? Well, it's uh, it is a challenge, and you know I know that a number of folks have said that there was uh, you know talk amongst the other competitors that that mm. this may be happening, and so uh, you know I, I I don't know specifically if that was the case, but I know that you know um, drivers do not not just driver crew members and i think the crew members as they're pushing the cars up pit road and and the drivers are getting ready they're getting especially for qualifying it's at at a speedway where it's one car at a time and and so i I think there is a a little more of an opportunity to to see everything that goes on And, and and i know that there are crew members that specifically have the duty of watching other cars that they, they watch them as they come through inspection. Uh, they, they watch them, they, they'll make trips through the garage and, and take a look and, you know, everybody's trying to keep tabs on, on everyone mm-hmm. else. And, uh, and that, that's, that's, you know, part of, uh, it's been that way in racing for as long as I've been around that that's, that's yeah. 40 some years. The most important eyes maybe are just the ones, the competitors themselves. They're everywhere. Like. Right? Yeah, they are. Uh, I've talked to a handful of crew chiefs in the garage over the years, and many have told me that they will have lawyers take a look at the rule book before each season, try to find the different gray areas right. from a comp from, from the, you know, from your side, the official side, 
Do you guys have lawyers looking at the rule book? Like when you're looking at a rule book, are you almost trying to figure out where could they get the advantage type of thing? Yeah, you know, on, on the NASCAR side of thing, and that's why you see so many officials that work for NASCAR now who have a a past in, in the garage area, whether whether it be an engineer or a former hmm. crew chief or former drivers that are a part of the sport now. So, they, you know, they, they have a, a pretty good idea of, of what their, you know, counterparts have been thinking of or what they've been thinking of and, and so i don't know that i, I know that there is a legal team that it, whether it's uh, at the nascar side or or even on the car store side we we have someone you know take a look at things that we that we say that we do uh, to make sure that that we don't overlook something or maybe mm -hmm. that we don't say something that might back us into a corner mm -hmm. um so as so i know that happens uh, i would say though that when it comes to the technical rules that um not a not a lawyer per se uh, but there is enough um there's enough history within those rule book meetings that, that they are able to cover and and look that that rule book is is ever evolving right so <laughs> it is and, and you will read something in any of the rule books um one time and it will say something to you in one way you may read it the very next day and read it totally differently Gosh. so it is it is a, an ever evolving document i know the list has to be really long right fans love talking about this but what's the craziest thing that you have ever seen i i mean it ha I, there has to be many but there's got to be one that really stands out right yeah so so i'll go back to um my very early days i was a truck official back in in when it was in its inception and uh you know 95 96 and i, re I can remember being at louisville motor speedway and uh, crawling up underneath the truck i was the under truck inspector and taking a look at various items under there and i'll never forget uh, i ran across a part that had holes drilled in it that shouldn't have had holes drilled in it well the way that it was set up these holes were so big that anyone would have found it right so but i was brand new i was a, the new guy on the block i found this had the crew chief take it off and i took it back up into our hauler wayne alton was our director at the time and and he asked me, he said, how long did it take you to find this? Oh, man, 20 seconds. I was in and out. And he said, get your creeper, get back over there, because they wanted you to find this. This was bait, to find this early and quick so they could, you know, hopefully get you out from under there and not find something else. Wow. Almost wow. like that's crazy yeah, to me. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Listen, on top of you know the the penalties that we were talking about this week sometimes you gotta find the rules of fighting right, right. <laughs> there would be certain ones that come come with that uh jj Ailey's crew chief jason miller uh had an altercation with kyle weatherman uh on pit road after the race this past weekend so how do you approach that as as now the executive director of the cars tour in terms of people getting into it off of the track. Yeah, so I was, I guess, in the job with the Cars Tour just a couple of months, and we had a similar situation happen at one of our races where we we had a, an altercation on pit road that involved a, a lot of crew members, a, a big crowd of folks, after a couple drivers got tangled up uh, on the racetrack. And so, yeah, that that's tough. And it, and it's an area where I think uh, collectively as, as – not just cars tour, not just NASCAR. I think we all are wanting to work together. And, I, and I'll say this specifically for us at our level of racing, right? So on the NASCAR side, that would be all the weekly tracks and, and, and the, the regional uh, racing, ARCA and the modified mm -hmm. tour. So I, I think that the one thing that we are all wanting to take a real solid stance on is that we're not going to tolerate it. Mm -hmm. You know, we sat some people out. Um, we, uh, we were very aggressive with some of our penalties, and, and the one thing that we, that we did make an effort to do was stay consistent with the penalties that had got us to that point. But I said uh, very clearly in the, in the release that went out that this would be the last time we were going to be consistent. Uh, from this point forward, if, 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 it can, if behavior like that continued to happen, that we would just ramp the penalties up until we found out what that threshold was to make them not want to do it. So hopefully – as, as we kick off our season, hopefully we, uh, we don't have to go down that avenue, but we're ready if we are. Yeah. Going back to when you were with NASCAR as an official there, I mean, you have great relationships with all of these crew members, <laughs> all of these guys and teams. You're friends with these guys. Did you ever get mad at them for, like, <laughs> trying to – pull one over you right when they're when they're trying to cheat and did you ever kind of get into it with them 
And I don't know that I would say that I got mad. I mean, we all have a, the understanding in the garage. And I say we all, we all, every one of us handles that a little differently, right? So I know that in working with crew chiefs, you do develop that relationship, those relationships with those guys. And, you know, you see each other in and out of the garage area. But we also have the understanding that, you know, as as an official, we know that the race teams are trying to do everything they can to gain every possible advantage that they can find. And and sometimes that does, you know, tiptoe into the gray and maybe into the black. Um, they also understand that we have a job to do as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, while, you know, in the heat of the moment, you're, you're probably upset, you know, when you do find something that, you know, you, you there, it's not so you, you have to separate how you feel personally about it versus professionally. Right. So in the heat of the moment, you, you might get hit with it, you know, right up front that it does upset you that, Hey, you mm. tried to get this over on yeah, me. Right. Uh, but at the same time too, <laughs> too, you, you've got to realize that they're, they're just trying to, to, to be just a little bit better than their neighbor. And so, uh, you know, I, I've always taken the, and my dad instilled this in me when he was an official when I was growing up, you know, things that happen at the racetrack, you know, no matter how high the emotion is, once you step away from that, once you back away from that situation, then it's, then it's gone. You may not forget it completely, <laughs> um, but it's gone. It's always in your mind. I That's a, right. <laughs> I have a quick follow-up to this too, because just putting myself in this position, if I w were an official, it, is it kind of like a cat and mouse game? Like I think of like Tom and Jerry, where you're like, <laughs> you actually enjoy, you enjoy a little bit like trying to find this, right? And, and trying to kind of pull this out of teams. Is there like an adrenaline rush when you do find something uh, big and you're like, gotcha? I, I'll be honest, me personally, I, I don't. I, I hate it when I find something, right? <laughs> I hate it because of the fact that you know that coming on the back side of that are going to be penalties and there's going to be consequences for that. I, I'm okay with that. I understand that that's part of what we do. Um, even even seeing, you know, hearing the, the penalties from Atlanta from this week, you know, I, I hated hearing of, of, you know, number one, guys, you know, flexing a rule and then getting called on the back end. Uh, I'm proud of our – of officiating family that that they were able to to catch this right um but as officials we we would rather head this off at the pass we would rather them know that you know it's the risk is not or the reward is not worth the risk mm -hmm. you know having to say that backwards but you know i would rather i would rather be on the front end of making sure that they understand where we are and that they don't try to tiptoe across that line and and as you trickle down to the cars tour, especially at that level, because, you know, so many of those teams are, you know, grassroots teams, shoestring budgets, yeah. just barely getting to the racetrack. So, you know, it, it is really, really tough when, when they uh, cross that line and we have to impose a penalty. Absolutely. Uh, we want to get to more you know, uh, of this conversation. We have our weekly Dale call. We mm -hmm. have people call in, and the question this week was, how would you feel if your favorite driver cheated and, uh, well, I guess, got caught with it? So let's let's hear what uh, our fans had to say. Hey, Fire Captain Dale here. Innovation, sneakiness, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. You know, that's the key to, I think, great racing. Seen it in the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, and even well before. Drivers, teams, mechanics came up with these little tricks to make their car just a little bit quicker. Driving cookie-cutter race cars around the track where everybody's got the same stamped-out car. Boring. Boring. <laughs> we need a little innovation. We need some guys to be creative. The glove? Brilliant. Maybe not a Michael Jackson move, but great. I'd love to see it. Keep on doing it. Keep being sneaky. I think that makes it fun and makes it entertaining. Fire Captain Dale, see you later. <laughs> what do you think? Is it is it more entertaining when when this happens? I don't know. I I think that you know, of course, my version of entertainment is seeing them cross three wide at the start finish line sure, coming yeah. to the checker, right? <laughs> and so that's 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 the level of excitement that that I have, right? And and I don't know that you that you need to have, you know, the the innovation that goes on or or the perceived innovation innovation that goes on. I don't know that you have to have that to have that level of racing at the end. So that's where my excitement lies. You know, it. I, I think it is. You know, to to some degree, it's it's cool to see what they come with up yeah, with it sometimes, yeah. right? Uh, but at the same time, too, you know, we we all have to do our jobs and make sure that we keep keep uh, keep everything under wraps. Carla, what do you think? 
I mean, yeah, I think, again, it just kind of goes back to our conversation of like, you have to appreciate the creativity, mm-hmm. the fact that their minds went there, like you understand that their minds just don't work the way at least my mind works when it think when you're thinking about ways to to get that advantage. Um, just some really smart people in the room. And you have to kind of tip your hat at that. Listen, this this whole discussion of creativity, innovation, it's nothing new. We've uh, no. done this for beginning of auto racing, it seems That's like. Right. Uh, this week on the Dale Jr. Download, it was so awesome to have Waddell Wilson in the studio to discuss everything from his career uh, to old stories. And one thing he was very, very clear on is he has not cheated uh, in his <laughs> career. Uh, we've got a clip from Waddell. The fact that bottles... Nitrogen, nitrogen kind of had this little spell in the 70s. That must have been fascinating, I guess, as a you know, as a mechanic and an engine guy back then to have all that going on around you. Well, you know, I remember that era that that was going on, and I was not going to do that because yeah. the next thing is, you know, that is as blatant cheating as you can get. Was it as easy as just? hooking a bottle up and his, and mashing a button you know i never did bring it in the shop sure i never wanted to mess with it got afraid of ever mess with it i love it yeah and i i wouldn't do it i never yeah. had a hold of it not at one any one time and i wouldn't do it and no, you, i got accused of it but, but i've yeah, never but what, done it okay so i i saw you laugh there when i said he he has a firm stance that he has not cheated do you believe that i no. <sighs> <laughs> I won't. I won't say. I won't say cheated uh, and using that term right. I will sure. say, you know, Waddell. He was, you know, obviously a Hall of Famer, right? Absolutely. He 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 was able to do a lot of great things in our sport because of how smart he is, how smart he was, and, and so I, I don't know that you know. I, I, I want to. If he says he didn't cheat, I'm not going to accuse him of being a cheater. Sure. But I will guarantee you that. There was some innovation that was going on within his race shop, within the engine shop that where he was building engines. I, you know, there, he he didn't get to be when you knew, especially like like he was saying back, what Dale was talking about in the seventies, in the sixties and seventies, where a lot of it was going on. A lot of a lot of folks have admitted it was going on. Yeah. You know, if you if you weren't doing something, you you probably weren't keeping up. Yeah. So where's the line? Because as a just sports fan in general, you know, I feel like you, it's easy to tell where the line is with the with football, with baseball and even even golf and some other sports out there. Where is the line in NASCAR? Is it any advantage or is or is it just when they take it a little bit too far? Like for you, where is that line? Yeah, the rule book's supposed to be the line. I mean, it's just supposed to be right. So, you know, but, you know, there are folks within each shop. There are folks um you know, all throughout the sport that go to great lengths to find gray areas that they can work within. Um, there are tolerances for just about every measurement that we have, whether it's at the cup level all the way down to the grassroots level in the car store. There are, and, and the teams, if there is a tolerance, you can believe that they're working to the tolerance. They're not, they're mm-hmm. not working if it's supposed to be two inches, give or take half an inch. They're working to two and a half, right? Um but the rule book is supposed to be the line. The one thing that you have to, you, you really have to get yourself separated from is asking yourself the question, is, a, is it a competitive, competitive advantage? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. If it breaks the rule, mm-hmm. then it breaks the rule. And, you know, you have to take the subjectivity out of it. I got a quick question before we go to our next clip. Uh, you talked about that gray area. And I think what made Waddell so brilliant was, figuring out things that weren't in the rule book and that he was able to just create and do. And then there's a rule being made. Yeah. We, so we talk about that at the cars tool level right now. We, we enjoy the fact that our rule book is not a thousand pages. Sure. Right? Yeah. But at the same time, we, 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 we stress to our teams that in order to make sure that we don't get to a thousand pages, don't try to get so creative that we have to create rules mm. to uh, uh, to counter another rule. Don't don't make us have to keep adding to the rule book. Um, and and you're, you know, to your point, back in the '60s and '70s, the rule book was extremely thin. Yeah. The rule book to at the cup level now is to a point where it is not a printed book anymore, or if it is, it's in a three ring binder that's you know super thick, and and now it's electronic. So you know the the rule book has gotten to where it is because of folks trying to work inside the gray. 
I want to touch on, you were talking about sometimes the best eyes in the garage are the competitors themselves. And Denny Hamlin this week on Actions Detrimental spoke to that, and we've got a clip. Let's check a listen. Yeah, these, these teams tell on each other, for sure. Those of you who don't know, I mean, the teams, they call it a self-policing sport because that's, you know, when we're sitting next to each other, we're watching video of other cars. I mean, the NASCAR Cup Series, it's uh, full of snitches. I mean, all over the place. They tattletale. If they see something that someone's doing that is illegal or skirting the rule, oh, they'll tell the tower right away. They'll send that to John Probst or they'll send it to uh, Elton Sawyer and be like, hey, look, 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 look at that. That's they, why this. And they'll say, oh, well, well, we'll look into that. How often do you get people coming up to you? Uh, as the season gets started, I'll get a couple phone calls a week, I would imagine. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's, so it's not so much to that. <laughs> It's not so much that they're really snitching. They're they're basically in a roundabout way that maybe they're asking for permission if they can do that. Mm. But they want to come at it from from the angle of, hey, if I ask this, then I'm not going to get in trouble. But I'm asking this to let you know that it's already going on. So and that's at our level. Huh. Denny is exactly right. And and so, you know, when you see teams as as fans make their way through the garage and you and they ask ourselves the question of you know, the difference between the NASCAR garages versus, say, you know, the garages at the IndyCar level where they build walls and the, and, the, and the F1 where they have, you know, compartments for what they do so no one else can really see what's going on. The NASCAR garage is left open purposely. You know, at the Cars Tour, we work behind our haulers most everywhere we go, and it's open purposely. Um, so, you know, you you do rely on crew members and, and, and drivers um, to, to – come to you with things that they may see um yeah because you know at the end of the day with you know just a handful of inspectors whether no matter what level of the sport you're at uh, you can't be everywhere at one time um now i will say this too um there are teams that will come to you and get you looking in a direction so maybe you're not looking at something that they may be doing mm. uh, so you have to kind of you know when denny said that elton would make the statement that hey we'll look into that that that's a true statement because you have to take Every story that you get, you have to, you know, have to kind of filter through what you, mm. you believe you, and that's right. We'll investigate. You you do to some degree investigate everything that you sure. hear, um, but you have to also realize that someone may be trying to steer you down a path to get you away from something else. Yeah, I was complete. This really just helped open my eyes because I feel like every Mine time too. we hear about self policing, you think of the younger driver on the track, right? And then all the drivers coming up to him like, hey, this is not acceptable. You know, that that kind of code of conduct that drivers live by to picture this almost as like a playground and driver and like the kids coming up to tell the teacher on each <laughs> other. Like, that's just what I picture when it comes to like self policing of all of them coming to you to tell on each other. Did it does it ever feel that way? Does it ever feel like like you're hurting cats almost in a sense of like trying to get them all to abide by the same rule and also like hearing the, the complaints from each team too. Right. Yeah. So it, it can be overwhelming at some times. And, and especially as you know, the, you, you know, the statements that you hear a lot of times is they're doing this. And because of that, they have, they have an unfair advantage over what we're doing. And, and that's just within the tech rules in the garage. Um, you know, we, so we talked about the self-policing on the racetrack. We, we don't hear about that part of it a whole lot because that mm. generally takes care of itself. Yeah. Um, right. And, and so, but you know, in, in the garage area, you're, you're right. It's uh, sometimes it can be very overwhelming when you have them all coming at you and then, then they're all coming <laughs> at you with different stories. So you're having to kind of weigh out, you know, what they're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Kip, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to come in, discuss this. The cars tour is an excellent show. I've been to a handful of weekends, uh, what what can we tell everyone about what the Cars Tour has going on, not just this weekend, but this season? Yeah, so uh, a big season underway. Of course, you know, Z-Max coming on board as our uh, as our title sponsor. Uh, Sound Gear coming on as our presenting sponsor. Um, we, uh, we we finished uh, putting all of our, our wheel and lights on our pace car nice. the other day from HendrickCars.com. So, uh, you know, it, a lot of things have really come together here in the last uh, couple of weeks to, to get us on the road for our first race, which is uh, this weekend at Southern National. They're, they're doing something really kind of cool too with it being the first part of the year they're having a speed week of their own so our pro late models will kick off the speed week this saturday at their place they will race throughout the week with a lot of their local divisions and then we'll bookend it with our late model stocks to to round out the week and and man from there
there, it's uh, we've hit the ground running. So uh, lots of big races coming up. At uh, obviously, we talked about uh, earlier about our show coming up at North Wilkesboro on All Star mm-hmm. Weekend for NASCAR. We'll also crown our champion at North Wilkesboro in October. Um, so uh, that and and all the tracks that we do get to visit, it's going to be a heck of a see. A lot of interest from some. You know, we I know the announcement came out about Bubba Pollard driving. Yes, uh, one of the JRM cars uh, in the Xfinity Series at Richmond. Uh, we, we, we hear that he's going to come and run with us some too, along with Ooh. Steve and Nassie. And then you, you factor in the, the quapples and the butter beans and, and all of our, our guys who have made the cars tour so great. Um, it's going to be one, one heck of a season. So many great names. The action on track. Fantastic too. Kip, thanks so much for joining My us pleasure. today. Anytime. Well, Kip Childress, that was fantastic. Right there at the end, Carla, he alluded to yeah. Bubba Pollard making a big announcement. It was announced earlier today, and guess what? We've got him on the line right now. Bubba, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. And you've got some exciting news, so what is it? Yeah, so I got the call a few months ago um, from uh, everyone at Ream and Junior Motorsports to to give us an opportunity to go to Richmond here in a couple weeks. So we're excited about it and just uh, very thankful, uh, looking forward to it, and Hopefully we can go out there and uh, and uh, show everyone what we got. How excited are you to to go to Richmond? Like, what is it about this track that that makes this a good fit and a good race for you to to take part in? Well, growing up, that was one of all, always one of my favorite race tracks because it was still a short track, but it was still big enough um, to where you could race. Um, when when we started talking about this deal, I was a little nervous that um, I was going to get Martinsville, and uh, I you know <laughs> I, Martinsville is a great race track. Don't get me wrong, but you know, there's so much that can happen there and, and so much, you know, you're so close, you're running so close together and everyone else, you, you can, your day can get di- dictated off of someone getting upset with you or something like that, which it could happen at Richmond. But, uh, I feel like Richmond is just, um, more what I'm accustomed to what I, what I race, uh, throughout the short tracks and travel up and down the road racing each and every weekend. So, uh, I'm excited to go to Richmond. Um, that's it. I, when, when they said it was there, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, a great thing for me. You know, these Xfinity cars, they're heavy. This is maybe a, not the, the heavy type of car that you're used to driving. What kind of preparation goes into uh, getting ready for Richmond? Yeah, well, it's really going to be tough. Um, we ran some Arca races and things back uh, years ago, but it's been quite some time. And mm-hmm. the cars just drive so much different. They are heavier. Uh, the, the tire is so much different than what, what I'm used to. Um, so... You know, we're going to try to get some sim time here in the next couple of weeks. Um, we're also going to run the ARCA race at Five Flags Speedway um, here just the 24th, the week before Richmond, uh, to get used to, to the braking and things like that. So uh, the the places are, are a little bit similar. So I'm hoping to take a lot away from Five Flags mm. uh, with what I can I can learn there and take to Richmond. So um, I'm a little nervous with the pit stops and the way that thing, <laughs> what way it goes on with, with pit and hopefully I don't have to pit under green. Uh, it's just not something we're, we're used to anymore. We, a lot of our races that went back to, uh, the breaks and, um, having a five minute break and things like that. So, uh, we'll see, hopefully we can just, um, you know, study as much information, uh, with the team and the crew chiefs and, and things like that. And, I, talking to a lot of the drivers like Josh, uh, Noah, uh, Chase Elliott, uh, a lot of those guys have reached out and, um, you know, been supportive in, in anything they can do to help me out. So I know, I know a lot of those guys from racing our short track deal uh, with those guys. So, uh, yeah, just just gather all the mo- mo- as much information as I can and, and apply it to, to uh, that Saturday. Have you always wanted to do this? Like, did you see this pathway for your racing career? Well, I've, I've always wanted to have the opportunity. You know, growing up, that's that's what we've all – um, you know, our goal. Uh, but, you know, I always said, and I don't know if um, it's in God's plans that, you know, whatever may happen. And mine just seems like it's taking a little longer. But, uh, you know, I always wanted teams to want me. I didn't um, – I wasn't the type of person to to go out and ask for anything. I still don't like asking for anything this to this day. That's just not the person I am and how I was raised. But – I always wanted someone to come to me and ask me to drive a race car. And uh, it makes me feel good. It makes you feel wanted. Uh, it makes you feel like all the hard work you put into it is, you know, is deserving. So um, for, th- for them to call me, uh, it really feels good um, to get this opportunity. Um, you know, and, and nothing may ever come uh, from it. 
or it, it may, you, we never know, but I'm going to go out there and, and give a hundred percent, do the best I can, uh, have fun, um, and, and, and see what it's all about. So we'll see. You, I'll tell you what, the fans are sure excited. Uh, they're already <laughs> asking if there's going to be merch available. Can you answer <laughs> that for them? <laughs> yeah. So there's merch on, uh, available already. They got it online. We're also going to do some dad cast cars of not only the Ream, uh, Chevrolet, but also, uh, of my super late model as well. So, um, it's pretty neat to, to already have all that established and ready to go. So they can go online at junior motorsports, check it out and, uh, and get their merch and be prepared for, uh, March 30th. That diecast car, uh, is going to be awesome. I saw the, the preview when the announcement was made, the car looks fantastic. Uh, you mentioned like you want to go there and have fun. And, uh, you know, obviously a big opportunity, maybe there could be something that comes from this. How do you balance, you know, the nerves, the opportunity, the expectations while also remembering, man, racing's supposed to be fun. I'm supposed to have fun doing this. How do you manage the balance of that? Well, it is going to be tough. Uh, it's, it's something, uh, it, it, I won't have to kind of figure it out when I get there, but, yeah. um, it is, uh, it's, it's all going to be new, uh, to me. So, I think going into it, it, as long as I can have that mindset of just having fun and do, and I know I, I feel like I'm capable of, of getting the job done. And and uh, I know, you know over the years, it's time to have fun. It's time to zone in and, and get serious and uh, get down to work and, and get the job done. So it, it's going to be tough. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, a lot of the fans come out and enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, I can I can have a lot of people to lean on to that help me out to to get me through this. I got one more question before we let you go. We, this whole episode has been talking about you know racing creativity, innovation, you know, and a little bit of a nicer word for cheating, right? Um, <laughs> some have even said the competitors are the best eyes on what the rest of the competition is doing. Do you have a good, and like, you don't have to, you know, name any names or you throw anybody under the bus, but any good <laughs> innovation can. stories? You to do that. Or you could, too, if you want. Um, any good innovation well, stories you've seen over the years? Well, I've heard, um, you know, back in the, I've always heard stories growing up, like, um, the nitrous deal. I've heard that yeah. back in the seventies and eighties, uh, like from Ronnie Sanders when I was driving for him. And then uh, one thing that was big, uh, was mercury that guys would move mercury around in a race car, which is super, you know, it, illegal. Yeah. Um, anything else, but I mean, that's, that's, it's terrible. You can't get on your skin or anything. So, but they would move this mercury back and forth to get left side weight and things like that. But a lot of the old timers and stuff would do that. I don't know if it's true or not, but man, um, I, th there's so many rules now. It seems like back in the day, at times I've been racing late models for 25 years now, and, and things have changed a lot. Racing has changed. Uh, people have changed. It seems like the guys nowadays are a little scareder oh. to, to take that. I think they're a little, they're afraid to take that risk. Yeah. Uh, as You know, not like they was back then, but uh, Preston, I don't know how you say his name, Peltier, he used to work at Hendrick. I think he does a lot of the body stuff there. Uh, he's very innovative when it comes to, <laughs> to, to body work and downforce and aero, uh, and things like that. But he brought a car to, uh, to Berlin up there last year, man, it had, it was tricked all out with diffusers <laughs> underneath it. And us late mall guys don't even know what that is. You know what I mean? So we're all looking at it and pointing and, and, and like they said earlier, I mean, it, all, the racers tell on each other right? I mean, first hand. So I mean, I try to push the issue. That's our job is to try yeah. to get an edge over everyone we can. And, and just that little bit, I mean, people, we're trying to, we're, we're, we're not trying to find tenths and half a seconds. Now we're trying to find hundreds of thousands. And mm. that little bit is, it makes every little bit adds up. And, and the more you can get the, uh, the faster you're going to be. So we, we try to get every advantage that we can. I've, I've really not cheated, but I've done a little bit of the innovation <laughs> myself along the way. <laughs> I love it. I love the honesty there. That's fantastic. Well, uh, Bubba, thanks so much for taking the time. We're so excited to watch you get on the track. That 88 car, like I said, looks fantastic, uh, and we can't wait for Richmond. So best of luck to you. Thanks for joining today. Yeah, congrats. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you. Awesome. That was Bubba Pollard. He'll be driving that number 88 car in the Xfinity Series. Carla, it's going to be uh, fantastic to watch him race. But, you know, we, we we covered the innovation stories. He had some good ones, I thought. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. We asked the fans, what's your favorite innovation story from NASCAR? And I think we're going to pull some of the best ones up on the screen for us to read. Let's see. 
Kim, Andy Petrie telling the story about the hydraulic deck lid was pretty good on. That was. Um, everything Chad Knauss did. Poor Chad, just being thrown thrown into the whole category <laughs> there. All, all of it. Yes, everything he did. All of Chad <laughs> Knauss' career. Uh, the story DW told about lead being shot and released from the frame rails at the Jack Post, freaking legendary. Yes, that was a good Let one. Let me just say, Daryl Waltrip's name got thrown in a lot <laughs> on this conversation, obviously, right? But I feel like he was one of the main main drivers that people people kind of put out there. <laughs> All the Waltrips. So here's another Waltrip. It's the Waltrip family. Uh, Michael Waltrip and the Jet Fuel, the first year of Toyota. Yes, that was crazy. I don't know if that's crazier than Mercury or not, but it's up there yeah. for sure. Uh, this one's from Nikki. Smokey's car when NASCAR was inspecting his car and said there were 16 rule infractions after a few minutes of arguing. <laughs> Smokey jumps in the car and he says, make that 17. He fired it up and drove away. NASCAR holding the fuel tank. Apparently, it was a really long fuel line. Good for him. Love it from Smokey. <laughs> and Scott, I'm pretty sure the story that has not been told yet. Yes, I think that's the big one. So many untold stories, I think, that are still left on the table, Carla. Yeah, those are the ones that you really, really want to know. Do you have a favorite one, by the way? I feel like mine is going to be like anything to do with a spoiler, hydraulic spoiler. Like I always feel like that's just a memorable one. Um, but these little changes that can happen as you move the car or drive the car, things that they're not going to catch right in that that pre-race inspection. I always heard one of someone putting in like the actual frame rail of the chassis there was like oil with like a magnet or something like that and as the car burned fuel the oil would then displace towards the back of the car making the balance of the car more even wow. as a fuel run went on freaking genius totally illegal they got caught with it <laughs> uh that's always one that stuck out to me yeah, those are just, again, I just don't understand the the mindset that you have to have for that. But yeah, very, very illegal. That's what uh, Bubba said, right? <laughs> I totally agree. Well, what a great show. This is my favorite topic, I think, of NASCAR is just talking about these cheating stories. Yeah, it definitely is. And definitely a fun one. I think fans will will enjoy this one and hopefully maybe add to the conversation on on Twitter as well as they always do every week. And Andrew, I promise I will be back in studio next week. You will not be alone next week. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's quite lonely here if we cut to this. Yes, <laughs> look, this is the, we've got a bunch of empty chairs. I miss seeing everybody. Um, but Carla, thanks so much for taking time from Indianapolis and uh, calling in. We've got a bunch of Dirty Mo Media shows that are already out this week. The Teardown with Jeff Gluck and Jordan Bianchi. Uh, they recapped Atlanta. What a crazy finish that was. It, their reaction to it's fantastic. Action's detrimental. Denny Hamlin tells, I think, one of the funniest stories that I've heard Denny tell from that show. Please listen to it if you haven't. It's, it's probably story number one. That was a pun. You'll have to do the rest. You'll figure it out. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, door bumper clear was back. They were in full swing. Freddie said uh, he tweeted it out. I think that was one of the most fun races he's ever spotted. So their perspective of Atlanta is going to be uh, a good one to listen to. Two DJD shows already in the books. Dirty Air and a fantastic interview with Waddell Wilson and Speed Street. They recorded yesterday. Connor and Chase bringing their A game. It was uh, fun to watch. Plus, Dirty Mo Doe is out today. They are previewing everything you need to know from Las Vegas. If you're going to gamble on any race, might as well be the Las Vegas race, right? I think. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the Dale call. Make sure you call our number, 704-584-9703. We want to hear from you, the fans. Continue to tweet the hashtag, don't hold me to it. Y'all brought the a your A game for that this week and uh that's gonna do it for this week carla that's gonna do it yeah we'll see you next week we'll sign off you better be here on djd reloaded thanks everyone for listening